Hey, how's it going? Jamie Fenn here. And today you're going to learn how to do this clone offset effect in DaVinci Resolve. Today's effect is inspired by a music video with Larry Over and Fred Bang in 21. Now, as you can see, they isolate the subject and add some effects to the background and even put an overlay on top of it. Now, here's my example of what you'll learn how to do today. So this effect has a ton of flexibility and a lot of room to make it your own. So I'll show you how to do that exact effect and then also some alternatives to make it unique in your own way. So let's get started. So here we have a clip from the music video that has no effects on it. And the first thing we wanna do is hold down Alt or Option on our keyboard and then click on that clip and drag it up to duplicate it. Then once you've done that, you want to come into the color tab. So let's create a new node and hold down Alt or Option and press S, or you can right click and select Add Node Corrector. Then we wanna come down to the magic mask, which is this icon right here. Then what you wanna do is select the subject or the model in the frame. And all you have to do is just click and drag a small little line. And in order to see your selection, what we wanna do is come down here and where it says toggle mask overlay, let's go ahead and click that. Now under the quality tab here, I have faster selected, that's the default. I'm just going to leave it at that for this tutorial. But if you wanna get a more accurate selection, you can go ahead and select better. That will take up more of your computer's resources, but the trade-off is you'll get a better selection. So right now I'm in the middle of this frame, so I need to track backwards and forwards of our selection. So in order to do that, what we wanna do is come down here to where you see that pause button, and to the right and left of it are these arrows, and you want to select one of those depending on which way you want to track. So in this case, I'm just going to track backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and now select that arrow. Then once it's tracked all the way to the very beginning of your clip, you wanna to drag to the point where you started the track and then track the other direction. If you started at the beginning of your clip, you can just track one direction. Either way works fine. Okay, then once you've tracked your subject, you may need to make some refinements. So the radius, the clean black, they work in similar ways like if you were to pull a key. But I'm gonna leave that just the way it is for now. And so next thing we wanna do is right click up here and select add alpha output. Then connect the blue alpha to the output here. All right, let's go back to our edit tab. Now, if your computer's a little bit slower, what you can do is right click on that clip and select render in place. Select the codec to be H.264 and the type H.264 in the format QuickTime. Go ahead and click render. Then you'll have to pick the spot where you want to render the clip to and DaVinci Resolve will render this. Now, the reason I did this is just because working with that specific type of clip with the magic mask that we applied does make your computer a little bit slower. So this will help speed up the process of this effect. Okay, so once you've done that, now we have to treat this top clip as our foreground and this bottom clip as our background. So let's go ahead and push B on our keyboard to bring up the blade tool. And let's go ahead and cut this background clip a few times. So I'm going to cut it once right there and then once right there. Then I'm going to push A on my keyboard to bring the cursor back. And then I'm gonna come up here to the effects library and click on video transitions and then scroll down until you see fusion transitions. Now to get that background spinning kind of effect, what we wanna do is drag the pan left transition onto our first cut of the background clip that we created. And then also the drop warp is a pretty cool effect. That's what I used on the intro. So I'm going to drag that on top of the second cut. And let's adjust those transitions to be a little bit bigger, as big as we can. And the bigger the transition is, the longer the effect will happen on the background, which is really cool. It makes it look really warpy and creates some really cool visual effects for you know the background. Let's go ahead and turn off the effects library. So now we have something that looks like this. All right, so now what's really fun is we can just click this top foreground clip, drag that up, and let's bring in some stock footage. Now I found this clip on a stock website. It was labeled fireworks, but you guys could pretty much add anything you want. And so in order to get something behind our foreground isolated subject, what we can do is just drag that clip in underneath him, like so. 
But since this is an overlay, if you don't want this entire background to be that clip, what you have to do is come up to the inspector and then come down to where it says composite mode. Click on normal and scroll down until you see screen. Select screen. Now I faded this clip in by dragging this top little arrow indicator thing and I just dragged it over here to the middle so it fades in as the clip has some effects happening to it. So now this is what we have. Just like the intro. So the next thing you want to do is click on that top clip, our isolated subject, hold down Alt or Option on our keyboard, and drag that up another layer. So keep in mind, our top clip is always going to be our foreground subject. So anything you want to do behind him will be on the clips underneath. So now we have a duplicate of our isolated subject, and now we can start adding some effects to that as well. So for example, if you wanted to create multiple of him in some type of, like creating a clone effect, what we can do is start at the very beginning of the clip, come up here to the position X and Y in the transform under the inspector up here in the top right hand corner, select the keyframe, and then come over here to the middle or roughly somewhere over here, and then drag the position X over about negative 600, roughly. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And there we go. So now essentially what you can do is you're offsetting the main subject and you can do this multiple times to create a different clone effect. And you can start adding effects to that clip as well. So now you can see that we have a clone effect. He slides over to the side like that. So the next thing we want to do is again, duplicate our top clip. And now we want to clone the other direction. So let's go ahead with that second clip selected underneath. Click on the keyframe and drag this over like so. And then again, instead of going to the left, we're gonna to go to the right and let's go to the right about 600. Again, I'm just eyeballing this just to see how it will look. And now we're creating some really cool visual effects here. So now we have something that looks like this and it's epic. And you can start adding effects to each one of these clones now and really kind of just continue moving on with this effect and making whatever kind of custom designs you want, adding transitions and all types of really cool effects to anything you really want. Just make sure you layer it up and you continue to add effects to the background clips as you would want your foreground to be the main subject. And yeah. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you let, mm, damn it. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. And until next time, you guys have a good one and I'll see you in my next video.